Um, my name is Peter McMullen. I'm the president of CASI, the Confederation of Asia Pacific Chambers of Commerce and Industry. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this very important webinar on the uh, Nepal Nepalese investment environment. And it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce and welcome Pradeep Shretha, who is the vice president of CASI and who I've known for many years and I visited uh, Pradeep in Nepal some years ago and uh, I'm looking forward to a return visit, hopefully um, later this year, uh, to uh, as a presidential visit to Nepal, because I'm fascinated by its uh, potential and its great uh, uh, excitement uh, in uh, within Nepal itself. So over to you, Pradeep. Nepal, of course, uh, is a country of opportunities. It's a landlocked country. I say it's a highland country. We are not uh, sea locked, we are landlocked, but I think uh, the opportunities that Nepal can offer to the investors uh, would be great. I think one time visit uh, is just for seeing Nepal, but uh, the sec other visits could also uh, make you uh, available to find your right partners in Nepal and uh, see the business opportunities. Now the government is more is quite stable. Uh, or we have the president election done. I think the prime minister is all uh, set to make the uh, new ministries, and uh, it's very accessible. Uh, I'm sure Manoj, Manoj is going to touch other points, which I'm not going to highlight on that. Uh, now the uh, because of COVID, of course, uh, uh, the the our lifestyle have changed. Our eating lifestyle, living lifestyle, traveling. I think doing business all have changed, uh, but in a way, I, I, I must be thankful also <laughs> in a way to COVID also, otherwise we would not be doing such a webinar. I think this has already given us this uh, new new way of working together. Uh, we are in a, a new normal. Uh, and uh, Nepal as such, uh, in fact, uh, I was really looking forward uh, as our president rightly said that in the coming days, you would be physically present in his presidential visit and we'll make it a point that we organize a big good good program and also request uh, Peter also to uh, bring with you a good number of uh, the CASI members and others. Today uh, I think uh, it's a good time. Uh, it's, we have the best of the best weather. Uh, I think everything is good in Nepal. Uh, so we look forward to uh, see you in Nepal. Uh, now going back to the introduction, uh, Mr. Manoj Powell who is a young, energetic economist, outgoing, outcoming, I mean, very upcoming uh, businessman also in Nepal. He has a long working experience in different government fields uh, and also in the investment board. And he is also the director of uh, one of the very important commercial bank in the country. He can gather a lot of uh, working experience in different fields. Uh, and <coughs> he has done his MSc from the London School of uh, uh, Economics. Uh, and I think that itself, will tell you uh, the way he has worked in the past. And the best part is uh, FNCCI being the apex business body of the country. Uh, he is the co-chair of one of the very important uh, uh, the committee that is International Investment uh, uh, Commi uh, Committee. So who uh, he co-chairs that uh, and he has gathered a lot of working experience. And I think his presentation will help uh, the participants uh, today to know what Nepal can showcase, uh, what Nepal can offer to you. Uh, and also one thing that I also wanted to share with you is <clears throat> today in this uh, present context, uh, uh, Nepal also uh, like FNCCI, which is the Apex Boundary, they have one uh, special, uh, they have developed, uh, they will be having a special uh, uh, cell uh, to coordinate, uh, to work, uh, and solve all the uh, business uh, requests and any, any requirements uh, from the uh, businessman coming from outside to have a one window you know, solution. I think this will be one good step for FNCCI working with the investment board. So that will be also a good message uh, for the investors. So to go and present, uh, I mean, show the video of Nepal, uh, a couple of minutes video. So at least that will showcase uh, Nepal uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very colorful way. I think uh, that will also, uh, I mean, give you a good impression about what Nepal can offer before the uh, final presentation goes ahead with Manoj. Uh 
make your best deal in the land of Mount Everest. Nepal, the highest mountains in the world. Living cultures, festivals, diversity. Nepal, land of opportunity and growth. Unprecedented opportunities for investment and partnerships. Commitment to foster entrepreneurship and business. Strategic position between two of the world's fastest growing economies. Political will and policy reform to encourage investment. Young and dynamic population. Focus on greater regional integration. economic collaboration, profit, growth, success, innovation, and opportunity. Because the world's driven by investment for economic transformation. Because the entrepreneur is driven by innovation and efficiency. Nepal believes in shared prosperity through improved business climate. Make your best deal and be a part of prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali. Thank you so much. Uh, indeed, Nepal is a beautiful land of opportunities, uh, and that's what we are here to discuss uh, today. The video captured the sense uh, of the potential uh, that we have uh, in Nepal, uh, and it's already captured the essence of the presentation. Uh, but I'll go uh, a bit uh, into further detail and discuss uh, with you. Um, so let me uh, share my presentation uh, with you. Can you can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Great. So, uh, hello and namaste. Uh, my name is Manoj Podil, uh, and I'm the founder of Adyanta Fund Management Limited and also the co-chair of International Investment Promotion Committee uh, at FNCCI. Firstly, uh, big thank you to both uh, Cassie and FNCCI for the opportunity to present today. Uh, so today we're going to discuss and talk about Nepal business outlook, but a, a special focus on the investment opportunities that we have in Nepal uh, and, and why it's a good destination for you to uh, invest. Uh, invest here. Um, so firstly, a bit about FNCCI uh, is the umbrella organization uh, of the Nepali private sector, a very old institution established uh, more than 60, nearly 60 years uh, ago, and it represents the business community uh, at the national as well as the international level. Uh, also has a huge base, so not just at the big multinational companies level, but uh, from the grassroots itself. Um, and it mainly focuses on facilitating business environment improvement and economic growth in Nepal. Uh, and it also importantly deals with the labor related matters and other social issues. So just to give you an idea of uh, the membership uh, that it comprises of. So we have, uh, so about 121 district and municipality level chambers, which means it's really present at the local level, um, presence of local business uh, people. Uh, it has 123 commodity and sectoral associations. So ranging from uh, different sectors from IT to uh, different uh, value chain specific uh, in the agriculture sector and other sectors too. Um, there are about uh, 1700 leading public and private sector undertakings companies that are part uh, of FNCCI as associated associate members. And also Nepal has binational chambers. So a lot of uh, business relations uh, through binational chambers that are also represented uh, on the, uh, in the FNCCI. Uh, importantly, um, FNCCI, you know, the government has prioritized private sector representation on uh, boards, councils, committees, and policy advisory 
strategy body. So FNCCTI is represented throughout in almost all uh, national entities that are concerned with business and industries. So it, it really gives uh, FNCCI um, the, the leverage to actually influence uh, policy and decision making uh, for good uh, in the country. Uh, so I'd like to start with the overview of Nepal and its economy, just to give you an idea uh, of, of where we are. So uh, as you can see, you could see in the video, it's located in South Asia. So sometimes, um, you know, it, it seems like a small country, uh, given its uh, positioning between India and China, but it really uh, is, is in terms of population, in terms of the labor force that we have, it's a, it's a significant economy uh, in South Asia. And uh, the climate, as you can, uh, you know, as you can um, Imagine it, it ranges. There's a there's a variety of range, and people. If you, some of you who might have already traveled to Nepal can experience that. So within a short uh, altitude, uh, you know, the, the short. Uh, distance, there's a variation in the altitude, which really opens up opportunities in specific sectors like tourism. The form of government uh, is parliamentary democracy. Uh, so we had a new constitution uh, that came uh, about uh, seven years ago, after which we've, we've had a stable governments, a stable federal forms of government, which has opened up uh, activities, not just at the federal level, but also opportunities at the provincial government level and local government level, who also have a significant say and and uh, power in terms of attracting investment. They go a step forward in terms of uh, uh, competing to attract investment to their locations. So that has opened up a new avenues for us. Uh, we are a landlocked country, but then the nearest ports are not that very far. So the nearest ports are uh, in Kolkata and Visakhapatnam uh, in India. So uh, in terms of the sectors that we have, uh, you know, uh, agriculture uh, sector represents a significant portion, about uh, a quarter of the economy. Uh, and then we have uh, industrial sector, which is just about 10%, and the service sector, which is, uh, which is growing at a fast pace uh, in recent time. So uh, I've cited data from the World Bank, which shows uh, the projected real GDP growth rate. Uh, of course, it was impacted by, uh, by, by, the, by the pandemic, but the then since then it has picked up. Uh, so if you can, uh, if you if you look at it, uh, the pandemic and the agriculture sector uh, kind of saved uh, uh, Nepal's economy, uh, given a significant say uh, in the overall um, e economic as a proportion. Um, but then also uh, uh, things have started to get better. Uh, although you can, you know, and then it's projected uh, projected to be stable at least uh, in the in the coming years. After which we'll uh, will we're eventually going to see some growth. Um, but if you look uh, before COVID, if you look at the decade before COVID, you see a very good growth rate. Uh, you know, Nepal's growth rate was increasing at an average of 4.9% over the last decade. Uh, and then the GNI per capita also increased significantly uh, five folds um, in, in, in a matter of a uh, couple of decades. And especially we've seen a rebound in tourism sector, uh, which supports Nepal's uh, services sector and also some industrial growth. And that's especially because of the increased hydroelectricity production, where a lot of FDI has come in and the government has and the private sector, they have become successful in uh, building it as a mature uh, mature industry and mature sector in Nepal. In terms of Nepal's uh, business outlook and ease of doing business, so before uh, before the ease of doing business uh, index was discontinued, Nepal ranked significantly, uh, you know, it, it it made significant improvements. Uh, it ranked 90 out of 190 countries. But then the good thing is uh, in terms of access to credit information. So we ranked significantly high. And this shows the presence, the depth of the financial institutions uh, that we have in Nepal. So the commercial banks, the development banks, and different form of financial institutions, they have significant depth in Nepal. And they are now in a position to finance large uh, projects as well. Uh, so just uh, I want to, uh, to run through uh, some of the events that have influenced Nepal's uh, you know growth in the in the last few decades. Uh, so Nepal really opened up uh, to the world in 1950 uh, when when we when, when we had uh, you know when we had a democratic government government in place. Uh, since then, a lot of uh, acts and policies and regulations uh, they came into place. So we we uh, were officially opened. For 
uh, FDI in 1981. So that was when uh, the first FITA uh, was uh, legislated. Uh, that was a significant step in terms of attracting uh, investment in Nepal. Then uh, in 1987, there was the Structural Adjustment Program uh, and Structural Ad Adjustment uh, Facility, which, which really focused on strengthening the macroeconomic policies and of Nepal, and then started the whole liberalization uh, process in Nepal. So it really took off, uh, the private sector really took off after 1990. Uh, so the uh, important policies like industrial policy, industrial enterprise act for investment in one window policy and FITA, they were introduced uh, again in 1992. And that's when the, you know, private sector, this Started investment in a lot of different sectors, um, and and they 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 still continue uh, to do today. But then after that, we had some period of uh, some uh, uh, inter internal conflict in terms of civil war. But then, uh, importantly, we signed a peace treaty to end the decade-long civil war in 2006. Uh, and after that, uh, again, the other round of improvements in terms of policy uh, space has come about. Uh, so, Company Act uh, again was uh, reformulated in 2006. Uh, after the promulgation of constitution in 2015, uh, Industrial Enterprises Act and Labor Act, they were brought up and these were very important in actually uh, facilitating some of the uh, sectors. They uh, came up with some sector specific provisions to promote um, investment uh, in Nepal. Um, some, some real push was seen in 2019. So we had uh, investment summit that was organized, uh, which attracted uh, investors from around the world. So the investors investment summit was done in 2017. And then again, in 2019, but in 2019, uh, especially, it was not just uh, the in, that the investors came into Nepal, but also government showed uh, specific uh, openness and willingness in terms of uh, really uh, improving some of the laws, important laws. So uh, we had FITA, uh, which, which which is the major law uh, in terms of regulating the foreign investment. Um, we also had um, the uh, PPPIA, which is the Public Private Partnership and Investment Act, which formed uh, the investment board in Nepal, which which is the dedicated agency led by the right honorable prime minister to uh, attract and facilitate foreign investment in Nepal. Then also some uh, favorable um, uh, improve, improvements and amendments in terms of the Environment uh, Protection Act to ensure that uh, development and environmental protection, they go hand in hand and they're not against each other, right? So uh, in 2020, uh, again, Industrial Enterprises Act uh, came about. So this has really uh, set up a good uh, kind of regulatory uh, framework for any foreign investors or the domestic investors to come in, uh, to come and invest in Nepal across different sectors. So important developments uh, in terms of Nepal's infrastructure in recent times. So number one, uh, you know, we used, there used to be times when there was a lot of load shedding uh, and power cuts, but now, uh, you know, the population, 90, more than 90% of population has access to electricity and it's a load shedding free country. Uh, so, so, you know, that has come about in the last uh, decade. So really good environment in terms of the infrastructure uh, for, for foreign investment and industry uh, here in Nepal. Also very significant uh, is the uptake of internet and digital services and connectivity among the population here. So, you know, I've cited data here, 40.58 million uh, of people who have cellular mobile connections. Maybe, you know, it's much more now and people, and the use of device, uh, on average is more than uh, more than one. So that really shows uh, the penetration of internet and communication and really opens up avenues to invest uh, in not just ICT sector, but sectors where digital um, digital economy plays a key role. Uh, so, you know, that we, it's that's very important uh, infrastructure. Also, um, in terms of connectivity, a lot of uh, activities uh, happening in terms of roads, uh, and roads built uh, across across uh, uh, you know east west uh, east west uh, we used to have east west highway which was uh, the main uh, you know the main uh, highway uh, that connected nepal but now we also have connections uh, above and uh, below the east west highway so which connects um, uh, places in nepal from the east to the west and also now north to the south right and uh, and also uh, important is uh, as i mentioned already uh, bfi is that encourage so we have seen investment from foreign banks that have entered into Nepalese market through joint ventures and they have over time become very strong in terms of uh, facilitating uh, foreign investment in Nepal so that uh, project um, closures, financial closures can happen with participation of uh, domestic financial institutions.
So uh, moving on to the imports, major imports and major exports of Nepal. If you look at uh, the structure of major imports and exports, you can see that uh, Nepal mostly imports uh, refined petroleum, uh, iron, uh, cars, vehicles, and machineries. But then in terms of exports, a um, lot of potential in terms of agro uh, processing and agriculture uh, products, uh, you know, um, uh, as you can see, carpets, ginger, honey, and these uh, given, given where Nepal's economy and facilities that it receives and there's good opportunities to actually move up uh, a step up in the value chain uh, and move into areas like agro-processing um, as well um, uh, in terms of Nepal's FDI story, uh, here's uh, a recent survey by the Central Bank of Nepal, which uh, looked into FDI stock in Nepal uh, by major countries. Um, so, you know, fe uh, featuring, so India features uh, heavily in terms of uh, sharing the total FDI stock, constituting about uh, 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 one third uh, in the total FDI stock in Nepal. Then we have um, other countries in uh, Asia Pacific region, so China, uh, Singapore, um, Australia. Australia, South Korea, and some countries like you. Uh, and also uh, countries from the West, uh, for example, USA and uh, and Ireland. Uh, so, you know, a lot of different varieties in terms of where investment is coming from. Uh, in terms of the sectors uh, that are uh, that are uh, quite, that have attracted uh, FDI, so electricity, so definitely hydropower and energy sector uh, features heavily. So almost making, uh, you know, making half in 2019-2020, but then, uh, uh, oh, sorry, almost making uh, one third uh, uh, but then um, also increasing in recent years. Uh, we've also seen investment in the manufacturing sector, especially uh, cement, uh, a lot of uh, investment in the cement uh, industry uh, as well, uh, and also some investment in tourism. So you can see significant proportion in accommodation and also financial and insurance uh, services and some uh, in uh, uh, some in uh, in the uh, in in services uh, sector as well. So as you can see, you know a lot of different sectors they've uh, they've attracted investment uh, uh, FDI uh, and 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 it shows that Nepal is really attractive destination uh, in terms of attracting investment in a variety of different sectors. So here uh, I've uh, given um, data on the net FDI inflows. Uh, as you can see, uh, there was some. Uh, it, it kind of uh, it kind of decreased in 2013, uh, 14, uh, 14, 15, and 15, 16. Some of the some reason was Nepal faced uh, a, a devastating earthquake in 2015. Uh, but then since then, uh, you can see that it has significantly increase and um, as mentioned uh, during uh, in the beginning uh, of our event today uh, by Pradeep sir as well so after the promulgation of constitution in 2015 um, because of the stability uh, in terms of policy, um, you, you can see that FDI has sort of increased um, in recent years. So uh, I've talked about uh, the, uh, I've summarized the policy and legal and institutional framework, just to give an idea. These are the major uh, laws related to investment. So FITA, uh, PPPI, Labor Act, Company Act, Industrial Enterprise Act, Environmental Protection Act. Uh, so the FITA, uh, so it, ha it has uh, st stipulated that the minimum investment, and there's a recent uh, change uh, that, that was made by the government. So the minimum investment uh, in Nepal is about, um, Two hundred thousand uh, dollars for FDI, uh, and it has ensured that there's national treatment, no nationalization. Uh, One-stop service center was also uh, mandated by FITA, and also full repatriation of profits, benefits, income, uh, and also there's some um, good dispute settlement mechanism. Um, so, in terms of investment approving agencies, so two main uh, agencies. So, if if the uh, estimated project cost uh, is above around uh, fifty million dollars, so is the investment in investment board in Nepal uh, that is the regulating agencies. Uh, as I said, it's a entity that's led by the right and honourable prime minister of Nepal, um, which shows a dedicated focus in terms of attracting investment in Nepal. And if if, if the amount is less than USD fifty one million, then it's the Department of industry um, that regulates, um, you know, that regulates uh, the investment, and uh, this is an entity, and that's led by the Minister of uh, Industry, and uh, it's with uh, there's a separate um, body for that. 
So in terms of investment uh, process, so I won't go into detail, but just give you an idea. So, you know, initial consultation to identify whether your investment comes through the investment board in Nepal or the Department of Industry, then you make an application uh, and then you receive investment approval. Uh, and then uh, company registration takes place at the office of company registrar. Uh, you register for tax uh, at the inland revenue uh, and then do a specific industry registration at the Department of Industry. Uh, key uh, step here is the clearance from the central bank, which is Nepal Rashtra Bank. And then, and, and then uh, uh, you also uh, uh, work for permits uh, uh, in terms of visa, trademark, and environmental clearance. Uh, and then also negotiations uh, and agreements take place and then uh, additional services so in terms of negotiation and agreements a key feature that you might be interested in is the project development agreement uh, so um, uh, recently we've seen um, that uh, investment that have taken place through uh, facilitated by the investment uh, board nepal they've signed a project development agreement uh, for ppp projects and project investment agreement for private projects so that really uh, that really uh, you know um, details what sort of uh, what sort of agreements that will have uh, in place between the uh, between the government uh, of nepal and the private uh, private investor um, and and it really sets out um, you know sets out this sort of framework agreement so that this there's a stability um, and there's predictability for the investor uh, and also it lists uh, specific benefits and that is provided uh, to the investors so there might be some uh, sectors that are of priority to the government so uh, these uh, agreements so the pda or the pia will have uh, will list uh, what, what what are the uh, specific advantages or what are the specific waivers that are given to the private sector so you know this is a key feature that is attractive and has been uh, has been uh, good and influential in terms of attracting investment in especially in the energy sector and manufacturing sector in Nepal. So again, um, again, the video uh, actually uh, mentioned this, but strategic location uh, bordering two powerhouse economies, India and China, 100% uh, ownership in almost all sectors and 100% repatriation uh, guaranteed. Uh, in terms of market access, uh, you know, Nepal has received a lot of um, a lot of facilities. So duty free access to China uh, for more than 8000 products. And with the European Union, we have uh, quota free market access um, and also open border with uh, border access to India, uh, except for some products. So that really opens up avenues uh, to to actually tap into not just Nepali market, but also uh, market from India uh, and China as well. And as, as I mentioned, and the, uh, the legislative landscape is um, slowly becoming more liberal uh, and, and, and attractive uh, for the foreign investors um, in terms of the regime that we have. We also have some specific treaties in place. And uh, importantly, what I found in my experience talking to a lot of foreign investors is that they are interested in the talent here. So the labor pool uh, that we have, uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a English, mostly English majorities, English speaking uh, labor force. And, uh, you know, and in terms of uh, their approach and orientation, a lot of uh, investors find that very uh, attractive. So uh, some uh, info on the uh, type of visas that are granted. So there are some success stories. Uh, I won't go into a lot of detail. Maybe we can do that in, in, in the Q&A section. But we found that you know, there are some you know, old uh, uh, sort of investment that have continued uh, to reinvest in Nepal. Uh, say, for example, in the case of Dabur, uh, Unilever, and also there are um, important institutions and important investments. So in the uh, communication technology sector, so we have Encel, which is a large uh, investment in Nepal. Um, in, in the manufacturing sector, we have Hongshi Shivam, uh, uh, which is uh, cited as a success story here in Nepal, really changed the face of uh, face of Nepal, uh, where you, we used to be a, a country that imported raw materials for uh, for 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 manufacturing cement. But then, with uh, with the investment from FDI, with the uh, investment from uh, say, for example, companies like Hongshi Shivam, uh, it, it Nepal now uh, has become a self sufficient country. Uh, we've also been able to uh, explore uh, the limestones here, so. 
uh, now it's moved into a, a limestone based industry and um, you know that, that has really changed the face of some of the sectors we also have uh, interesting investments uh, uh, so in terms of mobility we have an investment which was uh, really uh, uh, doing well in Bangladesh and now it's in uh, Nepal as well so Patao um, which is the ride sharing platform uh, also have some uh, not investment but management expertise that have been brought in for example in in terms of Taz uh, which have been brought in uh, in Nepal so these, these are there are really you know much many much more uh, success stories in Nepal um, so uh, now I want to uh, spend some time in terms of talking about the potential sectors that might be attractive and maybe we can uh, do this in detail during the Q&A as well but uh, number one uh, you know energy features heavily and if you see at the uh, see the FDI commitment in uh, recent years um, and the actual FDI uh, investment that has happened uh, you can see a lot of uh, investment in energy sector there are key reasons so one uh, is the commitment from the government so with a clear target of a generation uh, and uh, and also uh, selling of electricity cross-border energy trade uh, which has started to place Nepal as the battery of South Asia. Uh, number two, the uh, even the consumption within the country has grown. Uh, we've also had key uh, MOUs in terms of grid integration in the BIMSTEC region, MOUs with Bangladesh, uh, with uh, agreements with India, uh, which has really opened up uh, avenues. And um, in, uh, importantly, there's guaranteed returns. Uh, so when you sign the power purchase agreement with Nepal Electricity Authority, so that's the, the government, uh, you know, it's agreeing to buy the energy at certain uh, rate uh, so that's a you know guaranteed market and also uh, tax exemption uh, as well so this, this has meant it's an, a very interesting sector so we have key investments uh, in the uh, in the energy sector so sjvn which is a, a very important example um, man, um, which is generating 900 in the process of generating 900 megawatt and much more in the eastern region so in terms of the tourism uh, sector uh, it's also an interesting area uh, especially uh, given and the landscape that we have, the areas of attraction that we have in Nepal. So uh, potential areas of investment could be in uh, hotels and recreation centers. We've, we've seen a lot of good investment in this area. Recently, mice tourism as well, uh, which could be of interest to a lot of you, uh, adventure tourism uh, and ecological and uh, cultural uh, tourism as well. Uh, so here you can see some examples. So uh, an example is uh, a model where um, tourism is linked with transport. So cable car projects coming up uh, in uh, so uh, we had a uh, we had an old uh, cable car project uh, in Manakamana but then uh, again after that we have in Chandragiri so these uh, feature uh, feature areas uh, of religious importance of historical significance and um, and also within a short span of time you can move through from a very uh, tropical environment to a very pleasant uh, pleasant kind of uh, environment in a very short span of time right so uh, so these uh, now there are opportunities to do these sort of investment outside Kathmandu, outside the capital as well. So uh, agriculture and agro-processing is an important area. So interestingly, recently, um, uh, recently now, uh, the, the Supreme Court has also ruled in favor of legal provision, which allows foreign investment in agriculture sector if the export is above 75%. And a lot of uh, credit facilities and support from bilateral institutions, government that you can receive if you're investing in, in this sector. Um, in terms of comparative advantage, you can have uh, sectors you can look at sectors like tea ginger cardamom and uh, medicinal and aromatic uh, plants as well so also there have been some activities in uh, agro um, related logistics uh, and other uh, like packaging and branding as well so this is really an important area uh, ICT and digital economy it's uh, taking uh, you know taking uh, good pace uh, in Nepal uh, given and given the sort of uh, uh, manpower the the human resources that is available in Nepal special areas for investment uh, is in software development mobile app development internet data centers and internet uh, service providers uh, I'll cite some examples so recently we had we had a very uh, big uh, investment that took place in Nepal so Worldlink um, the British international investment 
um, invested uh, in Worling and also uh, Dulma, which is a private equity um, equity in uh, with with uh, limited partners uh, in, featuring IFC, BII. They've also made a significant investment in Worling, which is an internet service provider. We've also had uh, investment in uh, in AI related companies like Fuse Machines, um, in in uh, business processing uh, outsourcing companies like Cloud Factory uh, and and also Deer Walk, right? So this really shows that there's a good opportunity to invest in these kind of uh, sectors in, uh, in, in Nepal. Um, in terms of education and health, so education, you will find the data, uh, uh, the data is such that Nepal is, and, and Nepalese are one of the largest spenders uh, in terms of uh, foreign uh, uh, education. So there's an opportunity to actually provide that sort of quality education uh, in Nepal itself, and it has already started. So we have a, a lot of um, affiliated, foreign affiliated uh, universities and uh, colleges that are providing high quality education uh, in Nepal but there are more opportunities. So uh, in terms of technical and vocational education, uh, some specific skills-based training, uh, research and innovation, uh, digital and, 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 and in, interestingly, e-learning platforms. So, so these are some of the uh, really important and interesting sectors where there's a huge market potential and it's growing uh, every year. So just to give an example, you know, the, we, we had uh, 45,000 students who received uh, no objection certificate to go outside uh, of Nepal for foreign uh, education uh, in 2021, but then it's increased significantly in 2022, right? So if we can provide that sort of education here in Nepal, uh, then then that, that really opens up uh, avenues. Uh, so in terms of health as well, so Nepal, Nepal is there, uh, one of the largest spenders. So um, uh, good destinations for Nepal they, uh, is like India and Thailand. Uh, so if if we can provide that specialized healthcare service in Nepal, uh, then uh, you know, then it can really be a good avenue. Uh, we already have good investment in pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, given Nepal's competitive advantage, uh, and telemedicine. Some sectors like optometry, you know, they, they, there's a good uh, good recognition of Nepal around the globe as well uh, for that area. Uh, so, so these are good sectors uh, as well. Uh, so, urban infrastructure, uh, you know, I've included that here. Uh, because Nepal features as one of the fastest uh, urbanizing uh, country in South Asia and, and the least urbanized. So you can, you can imagine uh, the amount of development, amount of uh, investment in uh, infrastructure that, uh, that is required here in Nepal. So uh, say, for example, uh, smart cities, uh, connectivity infrastructure, even waste management, um, and, and areas like these, uh, these are really, really uh, rife for investment. Um, so I uh, wanted to focus uh, one slide on private equity and venture capital. So uh, so the uh, so private equity and venture capital it's a uh, rather than an area of investment it's a it's a form of uh, form of investment uh, 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 um, a form of uh, FDI to come into Nepal. So uh, this is you know Nepal has been a bit slow in this, but then this means there are more opportunities. So if you look at some of the countries, so say for example India, uh, if we look at the data, uh, more than two thirds of FDI they come through. Uh, private equity and venture capital funds, right? So uh, about uh, nine, uh, about nine, uh, uh, about four years ago, so in 2075, in 2019, uh, we, the government brought in specialized investment fund regulations, and that has really laid down the foundation for uh, private equity and venture capital uh, funds to come into Nepal. So we've, we've already had presence of entities like Dolma Impact Fund, which were backed by, uh, B, uh, by DFIs, development finance institutions, but now we have have uh, domestic funds uh, as well, um, like uh, Adyanta and other many others uh, that are coming uh, into play. So and this could be uh, good avenues for any foreign investors to come into Nepal, so that they have uh, they have good partnership, uh, uh, you know, the good partnership to enter into an, in, in into Nepal. So I, I found that that's quite important while entering a new area, uh, new uh, new geography uh, for investment. So, uh, you know, then, uh, towards the end, I want to mention some of the efforts uh, that FNCCI has been doing uh, in terms of uh, um, really improving the business environment here and attracting uh, foreign investment. So uh, there's been a lot of uh, workshops, seminars and roadshows and uh, conferences that have been organized, some very sector specific as well. For example, we uh, did a symposium on partnership for uh, resilient tourism uh, industry um, and also conference 
confidence on establishing business incubators. Um, also, we've done some uh, important summits, uh, expos and trade fairs, and also a lot of uh, B2B meetings, interaction meetings happening, um, uh, happening at FNCCI as well. Uh, in terms of the in International Investment Promotion Committee, a key, uh, some key efforts have taken place. So, uh, you know, a lot of times you find um, investment story from the perspective of the government, but we thought, okay, let's give a perspective of Nepal as an investment destination from uh, the private sector, right? So FNCCI, we prepared an investment memorandum, which is a comprehensive document. Uh, it presents a clear and concise picture of the investment environment in Nepal. Uh, and uh, it also talks about various aspects uh, of the current state of Nepal's economy, opportunities in FDI, uh, and different um, different avenues available. So the, so the, you know, the, the, some of the gist of the investment memorandum I also presented uh, today during my uh, presentation. Uh, uh, interesting uh, initiative. So with the, uh, in collaboration with the investment board in Nepal, which is government entity, uh, the FNC CI has set up a help desk. Uh, so the setup has been uh, done. Now it's uh, we are operationalizing it. Um, so the major functions of the help desk is uh, to give services related to registration, uh, operation, and exit of industry. Uh, also implement decisions uh, related to providing incentives and subsidies to foreign investors as well. Uh, and also it's a uh, it's a place where foreign investors can actually uh, approach the private sector. So a lot of times what we find is uh, it it can be you know it can be difficult uh, to actually uh, speak the same language with the government right so we thought okay you know it's the private sector uh, that speaks the language of the private sector so uh, we've set up this help desk so that we can provide assistance uh, to uh, foreign investors on a lot of different areas and we also understand each other's language um, so, you know, potential in terms of potential opportunities for collaboration, uh, there's, uh, there's opportunity to, opportunity to connect uh, and liaise with foreign investors, um, also disperse uh, crucial information uh, to, uh, on FDI to investors. Uh, there might be some specific policies, so some specific policies that are related to some sectors. So we have a, we can collaboratively work to advocate for policy reforms uh, and, uh, and also uh, org organize some uh, specific investment summits and forums uh, and uh, expos. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, with that <laughs> call for collaboration, uh, I would like to uh, end my uh, presentation and open up uh, the floor for any uh, questions that you might have and discussions. First of all, let me thank uh, Manoj Hodel uh, for his wonderful presentation. Uh, there are few, few things just just wanted to add. Uh, for example, the help desk. Uh, so if you want to have that help desk, you have to help uh, and make use of that help desk, you know. So your participation is going to be very important. After hearing, you will know exactly what Nepal has been doing and uh, the focus uh, uh, for uh, inviting the, uh, the investors, uh, the access to the government, you know, and it's very easy. Uh, they are very, very uh, receptive. Uh, so I think we have to always take the advantage of this. If there, are, uh, if there is any question, you can please go ahead. How many free trade agreement Nepal has signed till now and how this uh, FTA? So uh, FITA, so there, there have been, a, uh, there have been different uh, versions of, you know, different versions of FITA, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So first one uh, came in 1981. Uh, and then after that, uh, we had uh, uh, FITA in 1992, uh, which, which, uh, uh, changed, you know, which uh, we changed a lot of things. But then, after the promulgation of the uh, constitution in 2015, um, recently um, in 2019, we came up uh, with FIDA. Now, it's uh, some of the key features is that it has helped uh, establish one-stop uh, service center, um, and it has defined the different forms of foreign investment in Nepal. Uh, it has also clarified mediums uh, used as a form of uh, investment, and also set uh, minimum uh, investment uh, requirements. Uh, uh, for uh, requirement, uh, which is, but then it, the minimum investment requirement was changed recently. So it used to be 50 million uh, NPR. Now uh, it's 20 million NPR, which amounts to about, uh, say, $200,000. Uh, so in terms of um, number of uh, uh, treaties, uh, you know, I can't quote the exact uh, figure, uh, but, uh, you know, we have uh, treaties um, uh, with uh, uh, with countries, uh, specific countries, as 
also as well as regions say for example as i mentioned uh, european uh, uni with the european union uh, with uh, usa uh, as well which uh, gives nepal some uh, key uh, key advantages so those key advantages you know nepal uh, as ldc uh, was uh, you know it, uh, it 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 could have availed but now as it's moving slowly uh, graduating from the uh, middle, uh, from the ldc i think some of these uh, might be taken back but then there's some still room for window of um, opportunity so we have um, uh, safta uh, which is the south asia uh, free trade uh, agreement uh, so under this uh, there are eight uh, eight um, countries uh, you know uh, but then there's also some list uh, long list of uh, and negative uh, list of goods as well uh, that are excluded so nepal's already a member nepal was member of wto uh, in 2004 uh, so it it avails a lot of uh, these uh, facilities um, from being a member of wto uh, it also became a member of uh, bimstick as well uh, so be of bengal initiative for um, multi sectoral technical and uh, economic uh, cooperation so uh, you know that's uh, that's another uh, free trade agreement that uh, nepal is part of and that features uh, countries from south and uh, southeast uh, asia um, so uh, in terms of actual bilateral uh, treaties uh, as far as i remember uh, we have treaties with uh, countries like uh, united states united kingdom um, russia republic of uh, korea north egypt bangladesh sri lanka bulgaria yeah china so i have now information which that we have about 17 uh, bilateral treaties uh, what was the next question uh, number of exhibition that nepal international yeah. exhibition that i think uh, yeah. you can answer i think <laughs> it really varies from year to year so some years we have uh, you know lot of so in terms of large investment summits uh, we've had two recent investment summits so one was in 2017 and the other one was in 2019 uh, uh, which which was a you know key investment summit uh, for nepal but now uh, we also have a lot of in summits that are organized by provincial governments as well uh, local governments uh, as well and uh, events uh, you know it's slowly picking up after covid uh, so there was some gap uh, for for a year or two but now uh, we we've started to do these road shows uh, Uh, and 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 uh, events i think it's uh, not only the summit but the exhibition exhibitions yeah. so we do have different uh, level of exhibitions uh, couple couple of exhibition for different products you know like carpet is there uh, shoes and different products uh, commercial uh, the the uh, uh, what is manufactured in the country a uh, few of the national chambers do organize uh, similar uh, exhibitions yeah please I think there have been a lot of question by Mr. Said Jain. Uh, so, are you reading that uh, in the chat box? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. Find, okay, let yeah, me okay. see. The, let me see the chat box. I mean, one is the how is the relation uh, with Afghanistan? Of course, Afghanistan is also one of the neighbors of our country. Uh, yeah. Our relation is good with all the neighbors, uh, though we have not direct access to Afghanistan. Our yeah. trade is not much with Afghanistan, but still, uh, we yeah, are open yeah. to everybody. yeah i think if you look at the export import data there are some um, there are some uh, key there are some products that you know th that we are engaged uh, with afghanistan uh, in terms of exports and imports but then uh, there is a lot of opportunities um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, increasing these uh, bilateral relations i do, as far as i know we have uh, regional uh, we have uh, agreements in terms of regional agreements so we are part of the same uh, regional uh, agreements but then we don't really have a direct bilateral uh, relation uh, as of now but then that means we we do have opportunities uh, in terms of uh, building such relationships in the future just see in the chat box some of the questions yeah. if not so i think there is one uh, question and related to uh, banking sector right so in terms yeah, of yeah, yeah. banking relationships uh, nepali banks apparently not keen yes that's true uh, some of the one of the reason could be um, that there's a lot of uh, you know regular there's a lot of regulatory issues around uh, you know aml uh, cft and you know it's it's a uh, really regulated um, area so the financial uh, industry is really regulated by uh, the central bank and you know that that might be one of the uh, one of the reasons uh, why why there might not be 
uh, so keen. But then, you know, if there's any such opportunities, we are more than uh, happy to facilitate uh, and connect you uh, with the with the banks uh, through the uh, through FNCCI as well. Um, most of the banks uh, and financial institutions are associate uh, members of uh, FNCCI, uh, so so we'll be happy to uh, help you with the facilitation. Did you get the next question uh, about NEA? Well, NEA is the uh, only authority that uh, enjoys, uh, I mean, they are the only buyer. Uh, yeah. is, is, so there is, uh, it's not that uh, whatever we ask, they give. So they have that uh, monopolistic approach. But uh, yeah. at the end of the day, it is Nepal's uh, biggest source of income would be selling the energy. You know? So yeah. Nepal has to rely, rely yeah. on that. Yeah. So they, and then they have been now uh, doing very well. Yeah, if I think Manos can add if there is anything. Yeah, so uh, you you are correct. So uh, the NEA is the uh, you know on on uh, NEA is one of the buyers. But then uh, uh, recently we've seen uh, you know agreements um, agreements cross border agreements uh, taking place and uh, markets like Bangladesh uh, opening up and uh, India as well. So some of the FDI projects uh, that I mentioned during the uh, presentation. So so you know these are uh, they they have agreements in place whereby Indian uh, parties uh, they are buying the power so it's not just uh, NEA. Uh, NEA so uh, right now uh, about uh, so in terms of uh, runoff river projects so ROR projects NEA is about to uh, open up um, uh, open up PPA for about 1500 megawatt uh, in Nepal uh, but then in terms of storage projects, uh, uh, you know, it, it is quite open uh, in terms of buyer. Uh, but then for larger buyers, I think the market has opened up. Uh, if you look at recent activities from NEA itself or the government of Nepal, and there's also uh, at the policy level, uh, there's also a lot of talk about uh, engaging the private sector in, uh, for cross-border electricity uh, trading as well. So I think that will really open up. So the Electricity Act amendment is, uh, is, is pending. So I think the, the recommendations have already gone. And one that, what, once that comes forth, uh, it will open up avenues for, whereby uh, private players in Nepal can uh, collaborate with private players in, uh, in India or around the region to actually, um, to actually facilitate uh, uh, the energy uh, buy and sell. Uh, there's one question about how it has Nepal uh, working on the health tourism, uh, yeah. as you want, you can answer or I can. Yeah, maybe you can add more as well. But health tourism, uh, you know, if you see uh, in recent years, we've seen good specialized hospital uh, open up in Nepal uh, in, in in many many different uh, areas. Uh, um, but um, also in some specific areas, so optometry I, I mentioned, uh, and also if you look at activities at the southern uh, region of Nepal, a lot of um, you know health tourists uh, from India who come into Nepal uh, for specific uh, services as well. Uh, but also at the same time, there's a lot of Nepalis who are going abroad for specialized health services. So uh, destinations like India, Thailand, and Singapore. Uh, so if we can, and if we are able to um, actually uh, uh, provide such facilities here in Nepal. So it will not just attract Nepali, uh, Nepali, uh, you know, Nepali service uh, seekers, but also people from the region as well. Maybe Pradeep, so you can add uh, a bit more on that. No, other than what Manus has told, uh, because of the weather, the location, you know, I think uh, people would really love to get that, uh, get them treated in uh, Nepal. Uh, it's, it's cheap uh, and. Uh, I think the accommodations and all hotels, everything is so available. So I feel that uh, the, uh, health and education, uh, these two utility sector could be one of the major areas for investment. And government is also trying to promote on that yeah. areas also. Yeah. Uh, there was one, uh, yeah, uh, it's an, you know, okay. but uh, uh, he has uh, thanked uh, Manoj for his wonderful presentation. It's great, thank you so it's much. encouraging. And uh, we'd like to also thank each and every, everyone who have, uh, you know, put up their questions and those who have listened patiently. Uh, but last and uh, one, one more thing that Manoj, I want you to highlight is about this uh, private equity venture capital. Uh, you know, what is, yeah. you, what is your uh, thought to that? I think you are on the banking sector. 
So you just yeah. uh, give us small tips, you know, I think that will be a good uh, message to the uh, viewers, uh, participants. Yeah, definitely, because uh, that's a sector that I work in as well. So, uh, you know, if you look around the globe in uh, across different countries, private equity and venture capital has been a key, uh, key platform to actually raise funds, both uh, domestically and for, from abroad uh, for good ideas, good investments uh, as well. And it also has been a good uh, source of attracting uh, foreign direct investment because uh, a lot of times for foreign investors, what I've found is uh, there's uh, difficulty in terms of choosing the right partner, right? So, and also, uh, uh, you know, they would, they, they like to actually explore different options and different sectors and uh, pool their investment and invest in a lot of different sectors. So private equity and venture capital actually facilitates that. So Nepal, uh, there were some uh, activities in this space. Uh, it started from a decade ago. But then mostly it was focused on, um, on the backing of development finance institutions uh, who set up some funds uh, here in Nepal. So that really uh, kick-started the whole uh, PVC uh, landscape in Nepal and gave it some momentum. But then interestingly, uh, so this year, um, about uh, 10, uh, 10 to 12 entities, Nepali domestic entities, have received uh, licenses to operate as fund managers. Uh, so this is the first time that although there were some uh, uh, domestic players, but then uh, it has now got the recognition of the government as an important sector uh, that is driving the economy. So about a dozen of these institutions have received license to raise funds, both from uh, both from Nepal and from uh, from abroad as well, to invest in a lot of different sectors. Right. So now uh, now you can have funds that are. Uh, that are uh, housed in Nepal or uh, that have jurisdiction outside Nepal as well. And then uh, with in, in collaboration with these fund managers, uh, you can uh, deploy these uh, funds. So this makes it easy uh, to actually uh, get approval from the government as well um, and also to explore potential projects as well. So a lot of uh, uh, difficulties happen in terms of project preparation, uh, in terms of finding the right type of projects and making them ready, having this investment ready project. Projects, right so uh, so these this sort of opens up avenues and it also opens up avenues to tap into uh, say the impact uh, impact funding green funding uh, where nepal as a destination can qualify for such uh, such kind of uh, um, you know sub, uh, such kind of impact funding right so this is really and we've already seen active activities in this space so uh, you know any participant who's who's listening right now or who will watch this webinar later on if you are exploring a destination where you want to deploy impact capital then nepal is uh, definitely the right uh, place and it's really it's just starting right now uh, you know we have a uh, we have whole uh, new era of opportunities uh, that is available uh, in this space uh, i think it was a very good presentation manoj uh, i think Cassie secretary did a wonderful job so peter you have any words to share yes uh, thanks pradeep and uh, look i just wanted to say um manoj it was a brilliant presentation and uh, i think the future is very bright for nepal if young entrepreneurs like you are in charge. So I'm very impressed <laughs> with your presentation and also with the enthusiasm with which you presented it. And uh, yeah, moving forward. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.